Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 17704. This build includes a number of new changes and enhancements over the last public preview build which was 17692 and the last build video which was somewhere in the 1768 region I believe. Either way, it's been a little while since the last build video. Uh, so let's dive in. The first noteworthy change is actually the loss of a feature, and that is Windows Sets. So Microsoft announced that with this build, they are pulling Windows Sets for the time being. Uh, that's so that they can go ahead and improve it internally and bring it back at a later date uh, with enhancements and changes to the user experience. So for now, uh, if we open up apps, for example, the Sets UI is just no longer present. They've just pulled it from the build. So when you upgrade to this build, if you've been using Sets previously, you will no longer see it. If we jump into settings here you'll also notice that um, it's no longer present in the multitasking area uh, as well uh, that's a real shame but microsoft does say this is all in the name of improving the feature which is a good thing in the long run so yes, that's all of the bad news in this build, I guess. Uh, let's move on to the good news, and that's with Microsoft Edge. So in this build, Microsoft Edge has received a whole bunch of new changes and enhancements. The first of which you may have already noticed, the logo has changed. So in Insider Builds from now on, you'll notice the beta logo stamped on top of the Edge logo. And this is so Microsoft can tell in screenshots whether somebody is using a public release or an Insider build. Insider builds are usually more buggy, so if someone's experiencing bugs, uh, Microsoft can determine that that's due to probably pre release code so yeah that's what that basically means and now it now it looks ugly kind of that's a real shame but yeah okay that's there <laughs> uh, moving on to the next note where they change in edge uh the ui up here has received a subtle drop shadow as you may or may not notice uh it looks nice um it's a subtle design choice uh, and I think it looks lovely and depending on your wallpaper it, it might be a little bit more noticeable than what it is currently here uh, but the bigger changes come with the drop down menu which is called the settings and more menu apparently so if we click on this it's been redesigned yet again now at the top here we have new tab new window and new in private window buttons which are really big for some reason then below that we have all of our normal options some of which are now in extended menus which you can go into like this uh, and also the settings area has been redesigned as well featuring the same sort of design layout found in the hub area so design consistency is always nice and now those two areas feature the same design uh, so just jumping into settings here it's pretty much all the same. Uh, we've still got all of our options here, including the options to change from light to dark and to dark to light. So the only new option in here is the media autoplay option, which is set to allow by default, but you can now control if audio and video play is automatic on websites. So if you visit a website that has autoplay ads, for example, you can make sure that doesn't happen by selecting block here and, uh, and websites that play video by default would not be able to do so. There's also the limit option, which um, restricts autoplay to only work when videos are muted. So you're never surprised by sound. So the video will automatically play, but the sound won't. And Block just disables the video altogether, which is very nice. And apparently some sites might not work as expected. By default, this is set to allow because I don't know, but there you go, it's set to allow. And that's a nice feature. So if you're somebody who is annoyed by autoplaying videos on websites, you can now turn it off via Edge, which is very nice. Now, another new change with Edge is the ability to hide the system sort of buttons up here in the address bar. This is something that's been in testing via A-B testing for quite some time now, all the way back since Redstone 2, I believe. Uh, and Microsoft is finally making it available to everyone. So what you have to do here is just come down, come down to show in toolbar and just select the ones you want and don't want. So if I don't want the ink workspace, not ink workspace. So if I don't want the add notes button here, I can just press that and that will go away. Do that again if we come up here i can get rid of favorites and i can even get rid of share this page and just have you know nothing up there i actually like the hub area so i'm going to keep that there but i don't need the add notes button because this pc doesn't have pen support and i'm not really going to be inking onto a laptop anyway so um let's add where was it favorites we can also add quick shortcuts to other areas in the hub including downloads so if we click up here, that will now take me straight to the download area in the hub, which is fantastic. And that's pretty much it for Edge. It's uh, small improvements, but improvements nonetheless, and making Edge a much better browser overall. I know a lot of you, I know a lot of you still think Edge is a terrible web browser. Edge has improved dramatically since it first launched back in 2015. If you haven't tried it since then, I would definitely recommend giving it another try. It's so much better today than it has been in the past, and it's getting better with every new build, which is fantastic. 
Okay, moving on. The next noteworthy change in this build is a brand new bundled Skype app. So the Skype app that's been bundled with Windows 10 since I believe the anniversary update hasn't been great. It launched kind of in beta and it never sort of left beta. It always looked unfinished and unpolished and it was always missing features and it kind of sucked. Uh, Microsoft has now changed that. They've, they are now bundling a brand new Skype universal app which looks like this. It's a little bit more feature filled and it has a much better design, which is a good thing. So um, it looks like the app found on iOS and Android and that's a deliberate choice, I believe. So the Skype sort of platform looks the same across all the different platforms it's available on now. It doesn't follow Fluent Design, which is a shame, but in this case, since the old Skype app was so ugly, this is an improvement nonetheless, and I'm actually kind of enjoying it. So you can see up here, we still have all of our buttons and stuff. Here's a chat window. I can say hello and stuff. And apparently I'm unable to, oh, that took just a minute, but okay. So yeah, I'm able to send messages here. And if we go into settings here, we can actually have options to uh, change profile pictures, sync contacts, in-app sounds, tips and tricks. We come back out, if we go into, um, if we come up to my account area here, we can actually change the theme of the app into dark mode. So yes, this app also supports dark mode and looks like this. And I think it looks pretty nice. So yes, the new Skype app, a big improvement over the old one, I think it's nice to see here in Windows 10. Okay, so the next noteworthy change in this build is something called Typing Insights. This is a new feature, I guess, that essentially allows Microsoft to help you type better when using the on-screen keyboard within Windows. So if you come in here to Typing Insights, you'll see Windows is using artificial intelligence to help you type. To help you save time and type efficiently, Windows uses AI to do everything from suggesting words to auto-correcting spelling mistakes. Take a look at the insights below to see up to the minute stats of how AI has played a part in your typing. That sounds all very exciting, but yes, it only works with the touch keyboard, I believe. I do not believe they're using insights to help you type on a physical keyboard, at least not that I can tell. I'll open Notepad and check. Hello world. See if anything changed here. It did not, which means I have to enable the touchscreen one, which is here. And perhaps now I can start typing. This should be fun. Uh, where's the dot button? There's no period button. There we go. How are you today? I'm really well. Thanks. That was not how you spell thanks. But hopefully, if we minimize this, nothing changed. Of course it didn't. <laughs> uh, so I'll go back in here. Maybe I have to keep open. Okay, there we go. Auto completed words one, keystrokes saved one, spelling corrections three. So if we uh, actually reopen this and do some swipey stuff, the quick brown fox jumps. That's not how you do that. Fox jumps over the lazy dog. I can't say the swiping's very accurate. Um. Perhaps that's just me being terrible at swiping on a laptop. But uh, hey, there you go. You can see keystrokes saved and all that good stuff. So this will, you know, update over time. And eventually you have 10,000 keystrokes saved and all that stuff. It's very similar to SwiftKey. In fact, it's powered by SwiftKey. The keyboard in Windows 10, the virtual keyboard at least, is now powered by SwiftKey. The same keyboard you can find on Android and iOS. So this is basically all that same data being um, logged in the settings app for you to see now, which is great. Up next, if we open up the task manager, you'll see that in the processes tab here, performance tab, sorry. Nope, I was right, processes tab. There's now power usage and power usage trend. So the power usage tab allows you to see apps and services that are using power uh, and the amount of power. So you can see most of this is very low. And the power usage trend is the tab that allows you to see how apps are using power over two minutes. This column will be blank when you start an app, but will populate based on the power usage every two minutes. That's what Microsoft says. Also saying power usage a lot is really difficult, apparently. Also worth noting in this build, the snipping tool, the old legacy snipping tool, now has a notice saying, hey, this is going to go away soon. Uh, it won't be going away in Redstone 5, but probably Redstone 6 and beyond, it will be being removed. And that's because Microsoft has a new one, which we've already talked about, which I believe is accessed by the Windows key, Shift and S. There it is. And frankly, this is a much better, more modern experience. Uh, let's just quickly snip that like that. And that should now pop in to uh, sketch, screen sketch, which I can then draw on it and all that good stuff. 
yeah, there's no need for the legacy one anymore. We have a new one. Why would Microsoft build a new modern one if they weren't going to remove the old one? So that's why Snipping Tool's going away because it now has a replacement called the Screen Sketch Snipping Experience thing. And it's much better. So there you have it, guys. That's a quick look at Windows 10 Build 17704. Thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.